Actually, you know, ngayong umaga, uh, ang isang challenge sa amin ni, ni Pastor Carlo ay magdala ng uh, Timothy. Uh, yan ang mga tinitrain para isama sa mga prayer meetings at magturo. Ngayon, uh, di po ako magsishare. But yung isang Timothy ko po, uh, si Sir Christian uh, Reuben Morante, isa sa mga leader. Ito po sa Destiny Alaminos. Uh, siya po magsishare. So excited po ako. At uh, sige, let's welcome uh, Sir Christian Reuben Morante. Uh, greetings of grace and peace from our God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed morning to all our viewers. Uh, again, this is Christian Reuben Morante. Uh, dating Christian lang sa pangalan, pero ngayon ay Christian na din sa isip, salita, at sa gawa. Uh, I'm under the direct supervision and guidance, of course, of our head pastor, uh, Pastor Sandy Padilla from Destiny Church Alaminos. It is my great pleasure and honor again to be able to share to you our word for today, uh, which is entitled, What Will You Get? This is from the book of My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. Now, this question that we usually hear, uh, we usually hear this from, uh, I think, from game shows. Kung matatandaan nyo, meron mo tayong game show noon, noong 1970s. Hindi ko alam kung makakarelate ang ating mga millennials. Ang tawag sa game show noon was The Price is Right. Uh, hindi ho ako sigurado kung may nakapanood na, host, na sa atin ito. Uh, itong show kasi, it's a very old show. It was hosted by uh, Bob Barker in the 70s. And it has continued actually up until now with a different host. Now, to briefly describe the show, uh, it is a game show where contestants are vying to be selected. Uh, and the host would reveal behind the curtains what they would get. The prices would range from a brand new car to house and lots and to all uh, sorts of expensive things. Now, the goal of the, each contestant was that they would try to guess the price what they would get. And if they, they, they guess it right or the value of that they mentioned is close to the price that they are trying to uh, win, they win the price. Now, what I'm going to share with you today is actually about the life of Baruch, who chose to play the game of life uh, as a scribe of Prophet Jeremiah. Parang yung mga players nga do sa game show, uh, may mga ini-expect silang mapalanunan, pero ang kakaiba dito kay Baruch ay uh, iba ang nakuha niya. So let us know, what did he get? We can read the message of God to Baruch under Jeremiah 45. It's actually entitled, Message to Baruch. The word that Jeremiah, the prophet, spoke to Baruch, the son of Uriah, when he wrote these words in a book at the dictation of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to you, O Baruch. You said, Woe is me, for the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with groaning, and I find no rest. Thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, what I have built, I am breaking down. What I have planted, I am plucking up. That is the whole land. What do you seek? Great things for yourself? Seek them not. For behold, I am bringing disaster upon flesh, declares the Lord. But I will give you your life as a price of war in all places to which you may go. Kakaiba rin itong si uh, Baruch po. Ano? Uh, usually, pag naririnig natin ang pangalan na Baruch, 
ay na-associate natin siya doon sa Pilipino character na barok or yung primitive or poor living. But you see, the Baruch of the Bible, however, is the complete opposite. Baruch was a uh, Jewish aristocrat, meaning uh, isa siyang socialite noon, nang galing sa angkan ng mga royalty. Uh, he's also a well-educated man, uh, which was actually a uh, luxury back then. To give you a short context of it, maswerte ka na kung uh, nakapag-aral ka noon. Because during the time of Jeremiah, education was really a privilege. Just like any of us, uh, si Baruch did, he also had ambitions. Pero mukha atang uh, hindi natutuwa itong si Baruch sa trabaho niya being a scribe of uh, Jeremiah. So let me describe to you what a scribe is. A scribe is actually someone who would take down writings, which was actually not a very easy task noon. Dahil, uh, of course, noon, wala pa silang printer. Uh, back then, everything was manually and carefully written. Uh, wala pa nga noong snowpack. Uh, na, uh, ito yung parang white out na pag yeah, ano, at kaya mong burahin yung mga erasures mo if handwritten. Kaya nga siguro nasabi ni uh, Barok na pagod na siya. I am weary at nagre-reklamo siya with groaning and I find no rest. Walang pahinga. Na-stress talaga siya sa trabaho niya. Uh, sino ba namang hindi may stress din sa trabaho niya? Eh, mano-mano nga noon. Uh, it made me actually think na sometimes uh, we take uh, the technologies that we have right now. Like for example, right now we are using video conferencing to basically proclaim the word of God. Now, let me share si siguro sa inyo a, a short story niyong sa aking daughter na no, minsan napadaan ako sa uh, desk niya dahil of course uh, she's still uh, under the uh, online classes pa rin sila. Niyak siya. And then I asked her, oh, Angel, kasi ang pangalan niya, Angel. Bakit pa umiiyak? Sabi niya, kasi daddy, I have to identify the parts of a flower and I have to make a presentation and I have to do all other all our other modules. So to encourage her, uh, I showed to her this picture that I actually saw in Facebook which reminded me of our time back then. Uh, I told her, oh, ayan anak. I believe we, uh, you can see it in our slides. Yeah. Hindi ko alam kung nakaka-relate ulit ang mga ibang millennials. Millennial, bibig sabihin may linya na ang ulo. Millennia. So I told her, anak, o ganyan ang module namin noon. Yan ang uh, biniro ko sa kanya. Imagine nyo, you have, uh, in my high school days, you have to actually have the drawing itself. Uh, ito yung pangalang sa parts ng microscope, pati yung parts ng paramecium, eh sumasakit na yung ulo ko noon dyan. I actually drew something like that back then. So that's why uh, I was able to uh, laugh at the picture when I saw it on Facebook. And then biniro ko si Angel, sabi ko, sa drawing na ganyan, bagsak pa rin yan actually pag sa teacher namin noon. Dahil makikita mo, uh, lampas yung mga margin, yung mga handwriting niya ay... Eh, uh, hindi derecho. So, Angel's reaction back then was like, okay, sabi niya, at least now I have to do it in PowerPoint. So, that's the thing actually when uh, sometimes there are things in our life uh, that we take for granted. Kaya, uh, to, to really give you an idea of uh, what Baruch is uh, no, uh, going through, uh, let me share with you an example of kung ano yung tinutukoy ko na mano-mano nilang uh, sulat noon. Uh, it is actually called cuneiform writing. Uh, this was done in 627 BCE. O yan. Pag makikita niyo, it is actually written on stone. Itaga mo sa bato. Siguro dyan ang galing yung phrase na yun. Naiisip ko lang ano, uh, kaya siguro talagang sinabi ni Baruch, 
woe with me. Dahil imagine na lang natin kung magkamali ka lang siguro dyan at uh, sasabihin ni Jeremiah o ulitin mo. Siguro ang gagawin ni Jeremiah ay babasahin niya yung buong bato para ulitin ni Baruch. To make matters worse, uh, let's try to visualize being a scribe of Jeremiah. Aside from you have to painstakingly carve uh, the sentences na dinidictate ni Jeremiah, siguro mga ilang oras, mga ilang words, so talagang nananamnam niya yung mga uh, words na binibitawan ni Jeremiah. And then you would hear from Jeremiah what God would do. If, if we try to read the NLT version, God even said, Baruch, this is what the Lord says, I will destroy this nation that I built. I will uproot what I planted. In short, ang mensahe eh, na naririnig ni Baruch, sisirain ko lahat. Being a member of an aristocrat who has ambitions to make a name for himself. Tapos maririnig mo yun, imagine mo, uh, lahat na lang ng pangarap mo, eh, sisirain din pala. Kaya talaga, ayo, grabe yung expression niya. Actually, the woe is me is a desperate cry na kawawa ako. Ano na ang buhay ko ngayon? Paano na? Parang ganun yung sinasabi ni Baruch. I guess most of us when we uh, try to find the lighter side and laugh at the situation ni Baruch, uh, maybe some of us can associate with Baruch. Uh, because I'm sure we at one point of our life experience, uh, we sort of nagpagdaanan rin siguro natin yung ganyang sitwasyon where we seem to think na everything is going well, wala namang masyadong problema, everything uh, somehow falling into place, and then all of a sudden, sira ang lahat. So, in, in, in our local dialect here in Pangasinan, ang tawag dyan is Adoral Sukamata, which means nasira ang diskalte. And it's so timely na it indeed happened during the pandemic where akala natin, hindi natin ma-imagine na ganyan ang mangyayari. So thumbs up dyan yung mga pag nag-a-agree kayo. Tipong may plano ka sa buhay pero iba pala ang plano ni Lord. Taliwas doon sa plano mo. Yung tipong uh, may iyak tayo ngayon kay Lord na, Lord, bakit naman? Anong nangyari? All we can do is actually watch God's divine providence unfold. And uh, really, this is what is uh, actually amazing about our Bible. That the event that happened between Jeremiah and Baruch happened thousands of years ago. And we still see it applicable today. Uh, to say that the pandemic uh, destroyed lives is actually an understatement. It actually really wrecked havoc, uh, changing forever the course of each of our lives. And this is a global impact where the impact was so great na nagkaroon na tuloy tayo ng era that is defined after it. We now have a pre-pandemic and a post-pandemic. Uh, but still, this is how we should appreciate the Bible because this is how the prevailing character of God, that when He destroys, doon ko nakita na we have a God that destroys for a purpose and that the purpose is always good because I tried comparing it with, uh, with other gods. In, in other religions or in other stories or in, even in mythology, you can see them destroying actually with no greater purpose. Some gods even just destroy for the fun of it, like the gods in their mythology. But I've noticed that it is only in Christianity where I have seen a god who destroys in order to make something new or bring out something new. Let's ponder about this for a moment 
And in fact, uh, I encourage you to read throughout the Bible and you can see that the, the Bible is really replete with these instances. Uh, for example, in, in Ezekiel, we can read, uh, he takes away our heart of stone and puts in us a heart of flesh. That sometimes God needs to break us down in order to build, it, build us up. Kailangan muna siyang bubuwagin yung puso mong batok para doon niya may lalagay yung pusong malambot. In Isaiah, we can also read a similar nature of God where he destroys in order to replace it with something good. God said in Israel that Israel shall be chopped like a tree and left like a stump which would then be burnt down. But from that stump, the, a seed will, will shoot and grow, which shall be known as Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Yan, makikita natin siya sa Isaiah verse uh, 6.13, the night. Meron rin sa, actually in, in the book of Jeremiah itself, uh, the one that I'm reading right now. If you try to read the story, while it may seem at the beginning that it's all about destruction, it's actually not. Uh, it talks about hope for Israel, where God will cause his commandments no longer to be inscribed in the stones. Yung mga pinakita na ko kanina dun sa, sa cuneiform tablets. But now God's commandments now would be at the hearts of Israel. And this is actually accomplished by God. Uh, this is also carried over to New Testament in, in Corinthians where uh, yung famous adage natin na uh, the old needs to be discarded in order for the new to come. For Baruch, uh, yung message ni God is somehow formatted in a rebuke form. Niri rebuke si Baruch actually. God was trying to remind him to stop chasing after things which sa pananaw ni Baruch were great things. Yun na yung tinerm niya. But in God's eyes, these great things in the eyes of Baruch is actually not. God is reminding Baruch that the great things he is just chasing after are actually useless in a world that is destined to die. Sinabi nga niya, nasisirain niya. So, what are these things that you are pursuing? God wanted him to look beyond what his eyes can see. It's sort of an invitation to not anchor his life on temporary things which are fleeting. That while all he sees are the difficulties, challenges, and the trials of his job, the dangers and threats of the world around him. Kasi magulo noon eh, nung panahon ni Jeremiah, especially if you're uh, a prophet or a scribe of a prophet. But God assured him that if he is in service of God, fully surrendered according to God's will, he will be protected. And indeed, Baruch kept his life in the service to the Lord. Another background to this, actually, if you read really the, the family story ni Baruch, uh, isa sa mga kapatid ni Baruch naging prince. Uh, but ang binabasa natin ngayon ay not about yung kapatid niya na naging prince, but uh, about Baruch itself, which is now basically immortalized in the uh, Bible text. We can take example now from... Uh, the life of Baruch. You see, Baruch, uh, th this story teaches us na I believe we must be discerning in the things that we pursue. Uh, sometimes uh, we should ask ourselves this, and, and, and I actually asked it when I was trying to read about it, is that do we sometimes uh, chase greatness uh, that the world offers? Or do we look at what God is offering first? 
I believe we should rather seek the greatness of a God who offers the gift of eternal life that is paid in full by the life of His only Son, Jesus Christ. Sometimes we might think that uh, a choice between temporary versus eternity uh, shouldn't be a very difficult choice to make. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 4.18, uh, it tells us uh, that we must fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, meaning it is moving, it is fleeting, but what is unseen is eternal. Pero ano ang harsh reality? Ano talagang pinagdadaan natin? Sometimes tayo, we have this attitude where we cannot help sometimes but to really, we have this uh, pride na parang sometimes we refuse to submit to Him. We do not surrender to Him. At worst, we make ourselves our own masters, doing our own will. And we neglect the fact that it is not us who is in control, so we try to fight for control. And when things do not go our way, that is the time that we cry, woe is me. The reason why I share this is that I actually too lived a life like this. And in my experience, if there's anything that I can uh, really share, if due to our viewers, is that life apart from Christ is really very tiring. Kaya siguro lang ano, walang rest di ano si Baruch. This is why people who do not have their life fully surrendered in Christ is living on their own fleeting life. They're aging, they're withering day by day. But for those who serve Christ, they are renewed each day. Because just as what God promised to Baruch, God will give you life. And not just your typical life, but rather divine life. Because God is the source of all, of all life. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. John 1 verse. The Greek word actually that was used in this verse is the Zoe kind of life. It actually means absolute fullness of life. This is the very same uh, term used in John 10 verse 10, which reads, For he has come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. Every message by uh, inviting all our listeners into a prayer of surrender. Uh, you can speak your own words. Uh, I invite you to, to, to cry out to God your desire to surrender all your being to Him. So let's pray. Forgive us. The burden aspects uh, in our life that uh, they may not surrender to you. Lord, help us. The of this earthly desires that we have. Help us let go. Allow us, Lord, to to have the ability to renounce everything in your name. Lord, we want to love you more than anything with all our hearts, with our mind, with our soul. Lord, we want to treasure you more, more than anything, 
that the world has to offer. Lord, in this world, my life is not my own, but yours alone. Lord, we come to you now in total submission with no agenda. We entrust everything to you, Lord. Our family, our finances, our health, our provision, all our worries, Lord. Take away anything that prevents us from fully submitting to your will. Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you in advance for the, for the things that you are about to provide to us. For the gift of life that you have graciously given. Let your purpose be accomplished in our lives, Lord. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the worship. In Jesus' name, amen.